is the heart of the CUSA schedule in men's hoops in a night's evolution here on the UCF campus. These crowds are on pace to shatter home attendance records. Knights fans haven't had much to cheer about lately. The team looks to get back on track record-wise. It's one of the most beautiful days of the year, if not the most beautiful day of the year in the city beautiful. The UAB Blazers opposing the UCF Knights, both teams with identical records at 14 and five. I'm David Bauman alongside former Knights point guard, Mike O'Donnell, now the point man of our broadcast. Mike, UCF started the season a perfect 14 and 0, ranked as high as number 18 in the nation, only to follow that up with five straight losses. Why all the problems? Starts in the defensive end for the Knights. I think the most important thing they have to realize is that they were 14 and 0. They were really good, but they were good because they were playing lockdown defense and they were forcing teams to turn the ball over, which enabled them to get in transition and get easy buckets. Nothing short of a colossal collapse. It's been a case of the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, a perfect 13-0 start in non-conference play. The bad, just a 1-5 record in Conference USA play. The lone victory in the CUSA opener over Marshall. The ugly, the field goal percentage. Knights shooting just 39% from the field. That ranks worst in Conference USA, along with scoring off scoring margin and three-point field goal percentage and Mike this is a Knights team that came into Conference USA play a few weeks ago ranked number one in just about every major statistical category I know there have been a lot of problems in terms of team health what's the latest well I think AJ Roms is not going to play tonight he's he's hurt suffering from a stress reaction in his foot <clears throat> and uh, David Dyekite as well. I think that's the most important thing. Those two guys, in terms of speed and athleticism in the open court, they're going to have to make up for that on the defensive end. Well, who's going to defend Jamar Sanders? He's the team's leading scorer for UAB. Well, he's got a great knack for scoring, and it's going to take a number of different guys to stop him. He can do a variety of different things to get open shots. He can go inside, outside for buckets. He's very strong and finishes at the rim, and he's so good from that 10 to 15-foot area. Marcus Jordan hasn't played much point guard in recent weeks, but he's going to get a start at the point guard position in for the injured A.J. Romson. Well, he has to play smart, and he has to play under control at the point guard position. Just because he doesn't have doesn't score early should not deter his confidence. And with Ramsa out tonight, he has to be the leader on the floor for the Knights. UAB is a perfect 5-0 all-time against UCF. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups, and Donnie Jones will change his starting lineup for the sixth time in six games. Here's the starting lineup for the UAB Blazers. Aaron Johnson runs the point. This team goes how its point guard goes. Jamar Sanders, the team's leading scorer at the two. Anthony Criswell, a freshman at the three. Obi Soko and Cameron Moore are the forwards. For UCF, at the point guard position, it'll be Marcus Jordan. Isaac Sosa will start at the two. P.J. Gaynor in at the three. Keith Clanton, the four, and Tom Herzog, the big seven-footer, the five. This is the sixth straight game 
The Knights have used a different starting lineup. And the coaches in tonight's game, Mike Davis, the former Indiana head coach, is going for his 100th career win with UAB. He'll oppose Donnie Jones in his first season at UCF. Donnie Jones came from Marshall with a career record of 69 and 46. And now it's time for Mike O'Donnell's odometer. Mike, your keys to the game. Well, it starts and ends with defense tonight for the Knights. Injuries make it difficult to press for 40 minutes. Therefore, you must be sound in your half-court defense. And you have to limit unforced turnovers. This is a very good UAB team on defense. They're strong, physical, and active, and they will make you pay if you take chances. And remember, you were 14-0. Have confidence. You were a good team. Get back on track tonight. Do all the little things that made you good. Take charges. Dive on the floor for loose balls. That will let you be successful in this game tonight. Another big crowd on hand. Tom Herzog wins the tip against Cameron Moore. Big matchup tonight, Aaron Johnson versus Marcus Jordan. Johnson's going to try and make Marcus work on both ends of the floor to try and tire him out. Herzog in the paint. That's important tonight for UCF because I think UAB is a little undersized compared to UCF, especially in this first starting five for both teams. Well, Mike, you'd have to think Moore and Herzog is another crucial matchup. The jump shot is good, and that is a three for Sanders. Well, see, that's how he can hurt you. He can come off down screens and, and, and slice screens and also take it to the rim. That was the 51st three-pointer made this season by Sanders. Sosa the runner. And something you don't see him do very often, and he needs to do more than that. He can't just be a catch-and-shoot shooter right now, especially with Roms on the bench and David Diakite in limited play. Yeah, Mike, the Knights have had a tough time finding a third option in terms of offense. Sosa needs to be that guy. The strip. Credit Herzog. Knights keep it in play. Here comes Marcus Jordan. It's a little better hustle on the defensive end for the Knights than we've seen in previous games. Jordan kicks it back to Gaynor. 4-3. Switch. You know, he can shoot that. And I know Coach Jones doesn't want him shooting contested threes, but when he's open, he has his feet set, he's allowed to take those shots. Essentially have a two-guard lineup right now for UCF, so UAB has to be careful of switching. Oh, Moore got blocked by the rim. Oh, good nice feed. By Tom. Well, that's a good steal by Tom Herzog and a really nice feed by P.J. Gaynor. You can see the crispness on offense for UCF right now. Everything's very fluid. All passes have a purpose. We haven't seen that in the last few games. This is the first time UCF has gotten off to a Good start in quite a while. Yeah, and that's 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 the difference in Aaron Johnson's game this year and last year is that he's coming off that ball screen and he's looking to make a play, not just to pass it every time, but if he has an open jump shot, he's going to take it and he's knocking it down. Sosa thought about it. Uh, he, uh, Keith Clanton gave that to Sosa a little too late. He was open early. Marcus Jordan drives right, and that's what he does, and he's a lefty, makes it. But that move right there, that drive to the right and that step back, he's going to get that all night against Aaron Johnson because of the height advantage. Front rim, offensive rebound for Sanders. So give Johnson the edge in quickness, but Jordan in size and probably strength as well. well Aaron Johnson's very, very strong, but Marcus is deceptively strong. And I think that's something that Aaron Johnson has to take into account when he's guarding him. Jamar Sanders drills another three. That was a tough shot. Degree of difficulty pretty high. Well, Sanders can play. If, if you guys haven't seen Sanders play so far, I mean, this kid can really, really flat out score. Jordan turnover. Moore missed it, follows his miss. What a transformation for Cameron Moore. This guy comes in averaging 17 points and nine and a half rebounds per contest, way above his career averages. He's a junior. I mean, this is a very well-coached UAB team. I mean, Mike Davis knows, knows how to get everything he can out of his players. Ooh, Gaynor's call for the travel. 
See, we talked about at the beginning of the game, you can't have those unforced turnovers. I mean, UAVs, they, they may press a few times, but they're not going to press the whole game. But what they do in the half court is they make you work so hard for every single shot. Here's Dexter Fields, a four-year starter at Olympia High School. Nominee for a McDonald's All-American. And Fields is just a sophomore here for UAB. He can really light it up. Well, I know it came actually came down to UAB and UCF when it came to recruiting. Keith Clanton called for the defensive foul. 11 to 9 the score. UCF with the lead. 15 minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the first half. We'll be right back. There's UCF head coach Donnie Jones. His team leading 11-9 in the early going. It's 15-53 remaining in the first half. With a look at the team comparison, UAB on the left, UCF on the right. Very similar statistics. UAB a better free throw shooting team. Right now, I look at the turnovers per game. You see 14.1 for UCF. And that was not the case six or seven games ago. They were only averaging about 10 turnovers a game. And, and I'd say that, that's that been the big difference offensively is where they have not been able to get a fluid flow because they've been turning the ball over. Now here's a turnover for Sanders. Actually, Sanders' second shot was ruled a two. So he's got five points in the games. There's Hito Turgaloo of the Orlando Magic. Turgan the Magic had a tough time against the Chicago Bulls on Friday night. Dwight Howard scored 40 in the game. Still lost on the road. Great game, though. They're, they're playing unbelievable at home this year. And Turk's back, isn't and he's he? He's back. He's back. And the Orlando community loves it. Yeah, he's one of the fan favorites. Gaynor nearly had his pocket picked. Let's see if UCF doesn't try to go back inside on this possession. That's what they were successful with Tom Herzog. Gaynor kicks it out. Sykes is in the game. Oh, crossover. Nice move. Sykes in the paint. Couldn't get it, but the Knights will keep possession. What differences have you noticed in this Knights offense with Marcus Jordan running the point as opposed to A.J. Ramsa, who's out with the injury? Now, not to take anything away from what Marcus is doing well at the point guard right now, but I think it's all five guys moving without the basketball that's helping Marcus make better decisions on the floor as the point guard. Knights will keep possession after the block shot. UCF has struggled so far this year, getting points from baseline out of bounds plays. A much bigger lineup for UCF today. Jordan, the three, hits it. That's a step back jumper again. You know, when he's hitting that from three and he's hitting that from about 16, 18 feet, he's extremely difficult to guard. 
quick but jumper is good for Anthony Criswell. Well, that's how good Aaron Johnson is. I mean, he made that happen. He got into the heart of the defense, made UCF defense collapse, dished it up top. He's the heart and soul of this team. There is no doubt about it. Gaynor may have had a decent look at a three, but got it in. Tom Herzog and Herzog finishes. He's not flashy, but he's very efficient in what he does in the low post area. Herzog's got six. One of the nation's leading shot blockers. Sanders, nice move. Kick out. Fields. He's comfortable in his hometown. And how hard is UAB to guard when Dexter Fields can hit the three, Sanders can hit the three, and if you pump fake and you have to commit to two, you dish out for one. I mean, that's that's a great 2-3 combo that UAB has right there. And doesn't it make it easy on the point guard Aaron Sanders to rack up those assists? Yeah, huh? Aaron Johnson, yeah, absolutely. Aaron Johnson, excuse me. Here's Sosa. Defended by Fields. Oh, nice move to the left. Gainer. Well, it's not how the Knights drew it up. The air ball. UAB will just take it down court. Sanders. And that pass tip. We'll take that from way beyond the three-point arc. Herzog, nice board. 16-14 UCF leads. Right to a ball screen in transition, but good. Good job by UAB at getting in the driving lane. Criswell to Johnson, and he finishes right at Marcus Jordan. Two turnovers in the early going for Jordan. You know, that's what makes UAB so difficult to prepare for. You're like, man, they, t they, they turn you over so much, and yet you don't see them press. They're not denying every single passing lane, but they're just so aggressive, and they're so strong and fundamentally sound in the half court. Sosa for three. Oh, <laughs> it went halfway down. And he needs to hit that. I know he hit that little jumper earlier, that little floater. But for UCF to be successful in the half court right now, he has to make jump shots to extend that defense out. Good re-screen. Oh, what a feed and one. Herzog will be called for the foul. I mean, you're watching how you're supposed to play the point guard position. Uh, Aaron Johnson, he's got two buckets, but he's doing so much off a of ball screen, but driving and kicking, it's fun to watch. Tonight's officials. And Dwight McCombs is in the game along with Taylor Young. Taylor Young started the point guard position at Memphis. He's really worked his way back into the rotation. And he does a solid jump. You know what you're going to get from Taylor Young. You know he's going to play hard on the defensive end. And he's not going to turn the ball over on offense. And he's a good enough shooter where he can catch and shoot from three, semi-contested. So he's a very just, he's, he, he simply understands how to play the game of basketball. Ovi Soko completed the three-point play, and UAB leads by three. Sykes. Let that slip away. Yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough pass to catch, and Sykes he, he didn't give him a good pass, but McCombs does need to come up with that play. Of course, I'm a guard, and I always blame it on the big guy for not catching it, you know, <laughs> even though it's usually the other way around. You would. The three. <laughs> good defense by Jordan. Here comes Sykes. Transition game. Jordan for three. Not a good shot. It'll be UCF ball. Isaiah Sykes did a nice job to keep that alive. That's not a good shot. You know, his strength is getting to the bucket. And when you're in semi-transition, you have a defender backpedaling. That's when you want to attack and not pull up for a, for a three. I mean, he could shoot the three, but that's not his forte. A.J. Tyler's in the game for UCF. UAB has made some changes as well. Preston Purifoy is in the game for UAB. Here's Tyler over Fields. Missed it. Sykes. And a foul will go against Mike Davis's UAB Blazers. UAB leads by three. 11 minutes and 54 seconds left to play in the first half.
little funky dance there in the crowd. 1916 UAB leads here at UCF. And UAB is accustomed to leading in this series. The all-time edge, 5-0 in the Blazers' favor. This is the first season that the teams will play a home-and-home. Home. Donnie Jones, in his career at Marshall, was just 2-4 versus UAB. The last meeting between UAB and UCF was a 53-49 win right here at the UCF Arena. Talk about winless woes. UCF coming off a crushing defeat at Memphis. 0-9 all-time against Memphis. 0-5 all-time here against the Blazers. McCombs lost it with a left hand. And Soko will get some more free throws. And you'll see UAB get out and run transition. I mean, they're, they're, they're a type of team that's just going to take what the defense gives you. And you can see Taylor Young reaching in there. Once you swipe down, come down on the ball there, it's automatic foul. But UABs they're not going to push it for no reason. If they, if they have an opportunity to get at something out in transition, they're going to take advantage of that. But if there's nothing there, they're going to pull it out, and Aaron Johnson's going to run a set. And that's what makes them very successful. Soko misses that. He's just a 58% free throw shooter. When Donnie Jones was at Marshall, he was just 0 and he was 0 and 3 against Memphis. And this time at Marshall, he was 2 and 4 against UAB. Everybody always talks about Memphis being the top of Conference USA, and sometimes UAB gets left out of the equation. But somehow they're usually always playing for the Conference USA championship. <laughs> Where does UAB's coach, Mike Davis, rank among CUSA coaches? Oh, he's at the top. You know, he has such a, he's got such a great pedigree, you know, coaching in Indiana. I mean, he knows how to coach big-time basketball. Jordan was short on that three. You see, they don't have anything, so they're going to call a set, go to a ball screen, make Aaron Johnson make a play. So that's a great kick. Wow. Fields, 4-3. Jordan's got the rebound. And Coach Jones wants a little more rebounding and assists from Marcus Jordan, doesn't he? Yeah, well, because he needs to become more of a complete player. Tom Herzog kept that alive. Soko was called for the personal. It's his first. Coaches versus cancer this week. And all coaches will be wearing sneakers with their suits. Raises awareness for cancer, cancer research. We got our Nike basketball shoes on right now, That's actually. Right. True story. That's not us, but those are ours. Ours are black. It'll be interesting to see if UCF presses this possession. You know, knowing the fact that they're they're a little depleted because they have a couple guys sitting out for injuries. It'd be interesting, they're not, they're not going to press. They pressed after every single free throw this year. So Coach Jones opts out to kind of save the legs, save the energy, well, get back down, and lock down on defense. Down two players, Dyak yep. and Romson. And two of the fastest players from UCF. Yeah. What a pass from Sanders. Moore got stuffed by both Herzog and Clanton. Big scrum, Taylor Young. Getting tied up, and it'll be a jump ball. Well, the bottom line is you just don't bring it in against Tom Herzog and Keith Plant because, doggone it, they're going to block it. Bottom line. They're, they rank one and two in Conference USA and block shots. Herzog at 2.4 a game. Plant at 2.3. That's best for top 50 nationally, too. Plant ranks 31st nationally, and Herzog's 26th. UCF is the best shot blocking team in the country. And at 6.9 a game as a team. Clanton in the paint. Nice feed from Herzog. And one. That's a good, that's a good dump down by Tom. That's one of the more underrated parts of his game is that he's a pretty good post-to-post -post interior passer. As you can see, Keith going up strong. Looks like somebody's been working out with the shake weight, Mr. Bowman. That was their bread and butter in the first 10 games of the season, I thought, is that they were so good working that high-low between Keith Plant and Tom Herzog and post-to-post -post, because so many teams were doubling Keith in the post because he was so effective with his back to the basket and he would dump down to Tom. And they kind of got away from that a little bit. And you'll see 
You got a little 2-3 zone right now for UCF. Well, 10 minutes into the game, and Clanton's on the scoreboard for the first time. Completed the three-point play. Johnson, he is quick. Kick out. And watch UAB's guards along the baseline there. They will, they will start going in and out, run along the baseline, across the blocks. They'll get shots like that. Quincy Taylor for three. They have a great zone offense. You'll, you'll, you'll see them do constantly running along the baseline. They're going to try to create overloads, overloads in a zone. Clanton the hook. Short. The fight for it. Soku's got it. Johnson, here he comes. He's got four assists already. Looking for number five if Sanders can finish. Johnson here, he is on pace to set the Blazers record for a career assist leader. They're going to try and ball screen almost every wing to make the defense shift. Sosa did a nice job defensively right there on Sanders. Danner looking in the post to Clamp. Here's Keith. He's back to the basket. Let's see what move he's got. Turnaround. Missed it. You get the sense a little stagnant on offense for UCF the last three or four possessions. Moore. That jumper's off the front rim. Keith Clanton. So you don't have anything in transition here. So good job, Isaac Sosa. You know, if I'm UCF right now, I want to run a set. And they're going to run a set right now to try and get some type of bucket. Sosa in the paint. That'll be a call against the Blazers. Johnson whistled for that. Here comes Jordan. We're under eight minutes. We will step aside. UAB with a one-point lead. Seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Taylor with this three-pointer. A 22-21 lead for UAB here against UCF. Head coach George O'Leary in attendance. He rounded out his coaching staff this week with the hiring of Al Siemenson to coach the linebackers. He promoted linebackers coach John Skladany to the defensive coordinator position to replace the departed Dave Huxtable, who left for a job at Wisconsin. So O'Leary's staff uh, in place, and there's Keith Tribble, the AD here at UCF. His team's finding unprecedented success this season. Yeah, Both the football team and basketball team reaching the top 25s at the same time. Yeah, a, a historic season for UCF, there's no doubt about it. Certainly hate to see Coach Hux go. You know, he was definitely a fan favorite. That man was born to be a defensive co coordinator. <laughs> 
Herzog, he's got 10 points. How aggressive is Tom on the offensive end this game as opposed to the last five or six games? I mean, it's night and day. He's going against a pretty good player, Cameron Moore, defending Herzog in the post. Yeah, that's an important point. I mean, Cameron Moore's no slouch. No. I mean, he could play big-time defense there in the post. Wow. That's Cameron Moore. And that is a great ball fake. You saw two UCF players go flying in a good duck down. That's one of the things you could take advantage of is that UCF is a great blocking team, but they will go for almost every single shot fake. Herzog. That's the Whoa. spin cycle. Where did, that, where did that come from? UCF with a one-point lead. Herzog with 12. A la Kevin McHale. Herzog has more than doubled his season average, 5.5 points per game. Sanders, that's a two. Way off. Herzog's got the board. Now, Mike, this is a different Knights team with... Herzog when he's out of foul trouble. Exactly. Rebound more. Exactly. And I think yeah, even Coach Jones is going to be forced to, if he gets one or two fouls, to kind of keep him in there and have faith that he, he'll be able to not get another foul. But that's such a hard decision to make as a coach. No fouls right now for Herzog. I mean, you just watch how under control Johnson is. I mean, that's a big time pass. Man. Wow, and he goes at the seven-footer, gets it to drop. I mean, Johnson's not, a player. not more than 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, Listed with at 5'8". 5'8", with no hesitation whatsoever on taking it at the seven-footer, Herzog. Off the mark right there, UAB with a one-point lead and possession. UAV is going to take their time. They're going to run their set. There's a lob. Ooh, they missed him. Here's more in the post going at Herzog and with a right hook gets it over the seven footer. That's a good move. And I think when Moore, you know, puts on some weight, he's going to have a chance to be really, really good in this league because he's got the tools, he has the athleticism and the length. If he puts on a little weight, be able to bang with the big boys. He's going to be something to. Something to watch. Right through the hands of Herzog. Jordan put it on the money. Right Out Sports Network has bhsn.com online, the leader in local sports. Right Out Sports Network is a 24-hour local sports network dedicated to sports fans in Central Florida and Tampa Bay. We provide in-depth coverage of local sports, including high school, college, and professional teams. So log on, bhsn.com, for video, blogs, scores, and more. UAB with a three-point lead. Here comes Aaron Johnson. Johnson with six points and four assists in the early goings. UCF's going to sit in a zone right now. They're going to switch up defense to try and save their legs throughout the course of the game. Way off the mark. And it'll be UCF ball. Is that going to go against Moore? I think so. Yes, it will. Mike Davis didn't like that one bit. Didn't really catch it from that angle, what Moore did. But nonetheless, that's why we don't have striped T-shirts on. <laughs> he got tangled with Sosa. Jordan into Clint. Clint was looking for Sosa. Bang with the left hand, and he gets it. I mean, the patience, the patience to make a move like that. The ball stayed in his left hand the entire time. That's a three for Dexter Fields. They can shoot it. You know, you talk about how athletic they are and, you know, how strong they are when they get to the rim, but you also forget the fact they can shoot the three, too. That's offensive. Offensive, yeah. yeah. He didn't need, he had the step. Marcus didn't need to put his shoulder down. Was he going he had the to step. the left? Was he using the left hand, Mike? And he pushed up. <laughs> I know. It, and, and, I, and I'm laughing only for the reason, if it's your first time watching UCF, is, is that Marcus goes to the right 99.9% .9 of the time on offense. 
and he had it. That was a good move. That was the right move to make, but that push-off, that's a good call. It's one of those unique parts of Marcus Jordan's game. He's a left-handed player, although anytime he's going to the hoop, he's using the right hand for the layup. And he's driving right. UAB now with a four-point lead. Soto. That's a block. And, 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 and he was moving. That's the right call. I, it's a good idea by Sykes, but the right call by the referee. Well, we're under four to play when we come back. Obi Soko will get some more free throws. 31-27, the UAB lead. Thirty-one twenty-seven. The Blazers leading the Knights here at the UCF Arena. Another good crowd on hand for this one. Some fresh starts for first-year coaches here in Conference USA. Tim Floyd and Donnie Jones with two of the best marks of any first-year coaches in the country. Go across. Look at Steve Donahue at Boston College. Tad Boyle at Colorado, and then Fred Hoiberg, the mayor. The mayor, but you know, heck of a get by UTEP to get Tim Floyd, yeah. all his NBA connections and his basketball knowledge of being the NBA and USC. I mean, he's going to do really good things with that UTEP ball club. UTEP tied for the top record in CUSA. Soko makes the first. The sixth head coach in UCF basketball history he took over for Kirk Spiro. Spiro now on the staff at Iowa. Uh oh, that's oh an boy. air ball, and the crowd will be on Soko for the rest of the game. Now it's not like this Knights crowd invented the air ball chant, but no. what they do in a unique way is they will continue it every time Soko touches the ball for the rest of the game. Yeah, and, and, and then I think it's going to be amplified even more that it was a free throw. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that gets at players too. It really does. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to be tough as a player because you know it's going to come. That's a good throwback off the press. Clanton had an open look at three, and he's a 41% three point shooter. I think he's got a. He, that was a good ball fake, but I think if he caught it and saw Sosa, he needs to be one pass ahead because Sosa was open in the corner. It needs to be one of those quick touch passes, that boom, boom kind of pass. Gaynor and Herzog back in the game. Clanton thought about it again. And here's an open look. Good throwback. Oh, Gainer over the back. Yep, it's a good hustle by PJ. Excellent box out by UAB, though. Well, the offense has gone a little cold. 
UCF field goal percentage down to 44% for the game. Three point field goal percentage is 25%, two of eight. When one, when one team sits in his own, it's going to slow any game down. It's a double high ball screen. Sanders. Top of the key. Swish. It's automatic for him. Gets his feet set from the top of the key. It's a great looking shot. Johnson's already got five assists. Gainer for three. Front rim. You gotta watch out for Aaron Johnson to transition. Good pass. Here comes Jordan. There's a transition game. Slows it up. You'd like to see a set for UCF. UAB's done a very good job of guarding UCF in the half court in the last five or six possessions. Herzog in the post. Well, this isn't pretty at all. Oh, you bailed him out. Soko did, yes. That's his second. Soko bailed him out. Can't do that. I know Coach Davis is talking to him right now. He said, son, you got to understand something. Yeah, you, you were doing great for, third, for about 28 seconds. You were doing great. And then you let your mind wander a little bit and say, let me see if I can't get a steal here. And that's not UAB's forte. I mean, they're going to get steals, yes, but they're, the fact that they're so sound that they don't make really any mental errors on the defensive end. Uh, Herzog missed the lob. Blazers with a chance now to extend their biggest lead of the game. UCF back to man-to-man. -to -man. 35-27 the score. Blazers have the third best record in Conference USA play. Sanders may have gotten away with an extra step right there, but he missed it anyway. Fields defending Jordan. Clanton got stuck behind the hoop. Went off the backboard. Johnson. Blocked by Herzog. Good time to get on transition. Boy, UAB gets back in a hurry, don't they? Taylor Young for three. Swish. That's big for him. That's big for two reasons. One, that means UAB has to start honoring Taylor Young, and it was a good job of Marcus Jordan not forcing anything in semi-transition and finding the open, the open Taylor Young. What a kick. Are you serious? What a kick. Wow. That's backcourt. Oh, the acting job did not go how Johnson planned, and Sykes makes him pay. It's a three-point game. Isaiah Sykes, he's one of those glue guys. He's always around the ball, gets those loose balls, finishes strong. Johnson calls timeout. He tried to draw the foul against Sykes, and... Now, the referees see, weren't buying it. It's very rare that you're going to get a foul called against you on a loose ball when you try to act like you're getting a foul. That, that really doesn't happen right now. Now, M Mike Davis is going to draw up a play here. you got 9.7 seconds left. Right now, you, you go to your options. You, you know you're, you can get something off of the ball screen with Aaron Johnson, but don't be surprised to see you'll see the ball, you see the ball screen be a decoy, something for... So Sanders can get open on any type of like double screen or stagger away. That's kind of the stuff, the type of offense they like to run. Is you have to have multiple options. Aaron Johnson comes off the ball screen with Sanders coming off some type of down screen or double down screen on the other side. Coming up at halftime, we will break down the Conference USA standings. We'll have first half stats and highlights. Also an interview with... UCF baseball pitcher Brennan Dobbins. And my former classmate Brennan Dobbins. Amara Thompson checks in the walk on. Seen only a few minutes of action. What a pass. Perfect my pass. Goodness. Perfect execution. UCF doesn't get that. Hail Mary off in time. Knights. A losing record when trailing at halftime. 
37-32 the score. UAB point guard Aaron Johnson has been terrific. He's got seven assists. And we said at the beginning of the broadcast, this UAB team goes as its point guard goes. We'll break down the first half when we come back. Blazers leading 37-32. From the UCF Arena at Knights Plaza, this is the Bright House Sports Network Halftime Show. From the UCF Arena at Knights Plaza, this is the Bright House Sports Network Halftime Show. It's 37-32, to the UAB Blazers leading the UCF Knights. David Bauman alongside Mike O'Donnell, the former point guard for this UCF Knights basketball team, now the point man of our broadcast. Mike, let's break down the first half. It was a big first half for Knights center Tom Herzog with 12 points and six boards. But that point guard for UAB, Aaron Johnson, was terrific. Well, Mike Davis calls him the heart and soul of this UAB basketball team, and he does such a good job of penetrating inside the lane of the opposing team's defense, making defenders converge, and he kicks out. I mean, he's 5'8", but he can get up in the air, and he makes good decisions. Usually, you never want to have your point guard jump up in the air to make a pass, but somehow he figures out a way to do it, and he's been the fuel of the UAB fire so far in the first half. UAB making 50% of their shots in the game so far. Let's break down the Conference USA standings, and it's kind of tip. Typical at this point in the season, UTEP, Memphis atop the charts, 5-1 and one records. UTEP is 17-4 and four overall under first-year head coach Tim Floyd. Memphis, UAB, they're 4-2 and two in UAB. You expect to hover uh, along with Southern Miss for the rest of the season to try to win that CUSA championship? Yeah, UAB is, is very optimistic in terms of they can be the first team in the, uh, at the end of the year in terms of Conference USA standings. And how about SMU at 3-3 three and three right now? Usually they're at the bottom of the Conference USA standings, but they've done a great job with a big win over Memphis. 7-12, through 12, East Carolina, Tulsa, Tulane, Rice, Marshall. And who would have thought after a 14-0 start, UCF would be at the bottom of the CUSA standings at this point in the season. A lot of ball left to be played. You know, you can get back on track. It's just that it's going to take a lot of time right now when you start out 0-5 at Conference USA. There's only one other team in the country that can relate to the UCF recent woes, and that's Syracuse, which started off perfect 18-0 to follow up with four straight losses in Big East play. So the Blazers lead by five here at halftime. We'll have first half highlights when we come back.
Jacobs. I'd like to welcome everyone watching tonight's game at home and pass along my best wishes to our home team, the UCF Knights. Local Hi, I'm Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs. I'd like to welcome everyone watching tonight's game at home and pass along my best wishes to our home team, the UCF Knights. Local sports build community spirit, and Bright House Sports Network brings the excitement right into our homes year-round. We're proud of our student athletes here in Orange County. Good luck tonight and throughout the season, and go Knights! Thank you, Mayor Jacobs. 37-32 UAB leads UCF here at halftime. David Bauman alongside Mike O'Donnell. Mike, UAB made 50% of their shots and 50% of their threes, 5 of 10 from long range. Yeah, well, they're shooting the ball really, really well here in the first half, but a lot has to do with Aaron Johnson finding the open shooters. And you always talk about how UAB can get to the rim. They're so physical and they're so strong when they put the ball on the floor. But everybody forgets to talk about this team could shoot the three, and they could shoot it through well because they're unselfish. And because they take the ball to the bucket so good, that opens up the three-point shooting, and they've knocked them down here in the first half. Orlando native Dexter Fields made a pair of threes. We just saw Quincy Taylor. There's Fields again from long range for UCF. Big Tom Herza, 12 points, six rebounds. He's having a heck of a game so far. Tom's playing great. He's playing very aggressive in the offensive end, and he's not forcing. I thought he took one bad shot maybe in the first half, but so far he's been simple. Left shoulder, baby hooks. UCF's done a good job of finding him in the low post. I think they got away from that late in the first half. Shouldn't be surprising to see them go to them go to Tom early in the second half. What does UCF need to do differently in the second half to catch up? Well, I think on the defensive end, they need to still switch up their defense because they may have kind of tired legs because there's a few guys on the bench that aren't going to be playing as we're looking at Tom Herzog uh, uh, playing really well on the defensive end. But on offense, no dumb turnovers. Six assists to eight turnovers in the first half for UCF as opposed to 12 assists and only three turnovers for UAB. They need to take better care of the ball here in the second half. Okay, Mike, here's a look at the first half stats before we toss the break. 50% opposed to 45% from the field for the Blazers and the Knights. Yeah, you have out rebounding the Blazers by six. Again, I go to the assists and the turnovers right now. That's why U, uh, UAB is up 37-32, is that they're not turning the ball over and they're taking advantage of what UCF hasn't done well on the defensive end. They've done a pretty good job, but they're also just knocking down really good shots. Coach George O'Leary and President John Hitt. That's AD keep Tribble and Marty O'Leary looking on. UAB leads by five. We'll talk baseball when we come back. Uh, he's wearing Mike O'Donnell's, uh, so it should be the same. Brennan, want to just give a, a test? Uh, say 10987654321. 10987654321. 
Good to go. Keep talking. I'll keep talking until he stops moving his finger, and then we're good. Good. Shape. Good to go. All right, cool. All right, man. Just make reference to the camera. So right at okay. the beginning when I'm welcoming you, just you know, Smile. take a look into the camera. Yeah, and then uh, at the very end when I say thanks, we'll go Otherwise back to the Otherwise I'm camera. looking at you. Yeah, yeah, Other th then we're just having a conversation. Cool. And we will be able to hear each other. Okay. From the top of the backboard, UCF trails by five here at halftime to UAB. We're delighted to be joined by senior pitcher for the baseball team, Brennan Dobbins from nearby Lake Brantley High School. Brennan, uh, it was Fan Fest today for the baseball team. How'd it go? Fan Fest was awesome. We had a great time. Um, all of our players were able to come out and meet a bunch of the fans that came out. Uh, Coach Rooney was out there, and we were introducing every single person, um, giving away some prizes, and really just trying to hype up our uh, 2011 baseball season. We're and really excited about here's it. Here's a look at some of the Fan Fest. And ladies and gentlemen, prior to the UAP UCF game today. This is what took place on campus with giveaways, posters, autographs, and food. Brennan, when taking a look at this season, what, what are you most excited for? I mean, to be honest with you, we've got a great group of guys coming out this year. Um, we've got a bunch of new faces along with some of the older faces coming back. Uh, we've got a really solid offense coming back from last year, a bunch of freshman All-Americans returning for us. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of new arms on the mound as well that uh, Coach went out and recruited, and we're really excited to get out there and get going. Preseason uh, ranking at number four in Conference USA play. Getting overlooked a little bit? Um, I don't know. To be honest with you, I think it's awesome to get ranked in the top of a conference that uh, usually sends three to four teams to uh, NCAA regionals every single year. That's true. Um, I think it's a great honor for us, and, and you know, I think uh, that we're ready to go and ready to move up into the top of the conference this year. So, Will you be ranked in the top 25 before this season's over? Absolutely. Absolutely ready for it. I mean, we've got two goals every single day, and one of those goals is to get better every single day as a team, and the other goal is to get to Omaha, and we're not going to back down from that, so we're really excited about it. We're joined by Brennan Dahman, senior pitcher for UCF, and Brennan, before we're done, give us a couple of names to look out for, some potential stars on this nice team. I mean, we got some newcomers this year. Uh, you look for Matt Collins, maybe Ray Hansen, Danny Winkler on the mound, some talented Juco guys coming in, and then offensively, you look to the guys who did great things for us last year, and Ryan Breen and Chris Talladay and Bo Taylor are catchers. So uh, you can look for those guys to make some headlines this year, and we're really excited about it. Enjoy your se senior season. Hope, it, hope it's a great one. Thank you very much. Brennan Dobbins from the UCF baseball team. When we come back, we'll tip off the second half between UAB and UCF. Thanks, Brennan. Thank you.
Knights trailing the Blazers by five. And the second half is underway. Marcus Jordan running point guard tonight in for the injured A.J. Ramsa. Ramsa with that foot it was a stress reaction. Mike O'Donnell, you know all well about that stress reaction, how dangerous it can be. It's a loose ball. It'll be Knight's ball. Yeah, I, my senior year, I had a stress reaction in my foot, and uh, I, I, I tried to play on it just because I was an idiot and uh, ended up, break, ended up give, giving myself a fracture in my foot, and I couldn't play the last game of the season. So as difficult as it may have been for A.J. Romsa to sit out this game and hopefully isn't have to sit out any more games, it was probably the right thing to do. And, and I know how, we all know how much of a competitor he is, and uh, it just shows that he's trying, to, uh, he's trying to get better and get healthy, and uh, you know, we wish him a, a speedy recovery. We saw Romsa on the bench. Nice kick out from Jordan to Gaynor. Clanton with the offensive rebound and the putback. And Romsa standing and cheering on the end of the bench. We saw Romsa briefly there. Not sure what the brief delay was, but this game is underway. UCF trailing by three now. I think they gave UCF delay a game when the ball went through the hoop. But a good kick by Marcus Jordan. P.J. Gaynor has to knock that down, but the aggressiveness of Keith Clanton to come from the weak side to get a rebound. Clanton tipped that pass. A.J. Romps is UCF's assist leader and steals leader. And he's out indefinitely for the time being. No real timetable for his return. Fight for the rebound. Jordan comes away with it. Here's the transition game. Three on two. Jordan with the left hand. That had to be goaltending. Yes, it was. Yep. He used the left hand. I'm, I'm going to go on the record and say that I think that was the first bucket that Marcus Jordan has scored from the left side of the floor with his left hand. Florida game. Florida game? The up and under, remember? Oh, my mistake. How did I, how did I blow that? My goodness. That's why you're here for me. You cover up for me, and I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> It's all love, brother. UCF down one. Moore. That's knocked away by Herzog. Here comes Sosa. Again, Moore needs to get stronger. I mean, he's good. He's got a lot of talent, but he has to get stronger. Gaynor got the start tonight into Herzog. Big offensive first half for Herzog. He's going back to the free throw line. That might have been a little under... A little out of control, to be honest with you. You can see Tom didn't get his feet right, but he recognized that when you have an angle and you have an ability to go through the chin of the defender and the defender's moving, you have to take advantage of it. So good job by Tom of recognizing that. Herzog's 3-4-3 three, three from the charity stripe tonight. And UCF leads. A 6-0 run to start the second half. And the crowd is getting back into this one. The student section has been tremendous all season long. Good fade. That is a great, great fade by Sanders off the down screen there. Sanders has made three of five three-pointers tonight. He's got 11. Jordan picked up the dribble over to Clanton Gaynor. That was a nice pass by Herzog. Clanton the fadeaway. Makes it. It's a tough move. It's a tough move because it's so hard to guard because he's shooting a fadeaway jump shot under control. And even UAB came with a double team, and UAB did a good job of zoning up behind the bat, behind the double team. But Keith knocked down that jump shot. Jamar Sanders goes by Herzog. Too strong on the layup. Sanders' offensive rebound. Oh, an open look. Rebound Clanton. I don't Tie think, game. I don't think Sanders was quite set on that shot. I mean, he's going to normally knock down that three. Crossover, Jordan with a right. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Why not? That's it. See, he could shoot the ball with his right hand on the left side of the floor. He just got to drive it to the left. What makes Aaron Johnson so difficult to guard is his ability to change speeds. You can be the fastest point guard 
in the nation and be easy to guard because you'll go at one speed. But the fact that Aaron Johnson changes speeds, that means his defender doesn't know what speed he's going to use next. It makes him so difficult to guard. Johnson averaging 7.5 assists per game. That ranks number one in Conference USA. He's got eight tonight. Another three-point attempt, but that one is off the mark. That was Purifoy attempting that shot. Purifoy hitting 56% of his three-point attempts coming into tonight. Herzog in the post. Gainer thought about it, and the drive. Oh! Oh! 21 slam a jamma PJ Gainer. Where did that come from? My goodness, send it in, big fella. With the left hand. And that's exactly what you do not want to do when you get a momentum shifter like that. Wow. That foul goes against Taylor Young. UCF now with a four-point lead. Look out. Here comes Gaynor. Well, UCF watch. now with a four-point lead. Well, watch this play. UAB has to respect the fact that P.J. Gaynor has taken four three-pointers already in the game, blows right past him, and dunk me beautiful, P.J. Gaynor. That's how you play basketball. Gaynor with five points in tonight's contest. He's two of five from the field. He's played 19 minutes. He's got to start tonight. Tito Turgaloo, Atlanta Magic traded to get Turk back. They traded Vince Carter, Michael Petrus, and Marshall Lob. Kortot. Oh, Soku somehow missed that. Gaynor comes away with it. A kick back to Taylor Young, who slows it down. Got stuck on the hoop. Taylor has to make a better pass than that. Oh, boy. That's Soku finishes that time. Marcus Jordan let... Johnson go right by. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that we talked about. That matchup is so important. You know, does Marcus have the mental toughness to play hard for 40 minutes, knowing that Aaron Johnson is not going to come out of the game? Jordan, 4-3, hits it, and he's looking at the referees because he wanted the call on the pass to Clanton, thought he got fouled. Well, he can't do that. The more he looks at the rest, the less calls he's going to get. Dexter Fields fires right back with a two. UCF with a 47-44 lead. Marcus Jordan with 12 points now. We will go to break. 
And when we come back, 14 minutes, 46 seconds remaining in this game. UCF leads by three, 47-44. Dexter Fields for UAB has eight points in tonight's game. He's in his hometown right now. Played at Olympia High School under Mark Grissick for four years. Led that Olympia Titans team to a state runner-up finish in 08-09. Number one overall ranking at the state in Class 6A at one point. He scored a game-high 31 points in the 2009 championship defeat. Big time combo guard out of Orlando. Highly recruited in all of their uh, Florida schools. Clan playing a point forward position right now. The ball was tipped, still UCF ball. And those kind of plays drive me crazy. Yes, UCF's getting the ball back, but 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 Keith, that's such a lackadaisical pass. He needs to be more assertive in those plays that he knows that he's just kind of giving the ball up. Jordan defended by Johnson. Jordan's got Johnson by about six inches. Kick out, Gaynor. Well, they uh, missed Tom on the roll, yeah. I mean, they missed, PJ missed Tom on the roll. Johnson called for the block. So, Mike, why hasn't Marcus Jordan played much point guard in the last three to four games? Because it is, it is tiring to play point guard, especially when you haven't played at a consistent basis. Because not only is he called upon to score, but he's also called upon to run the offense. And usually as a shooting guard, I always, I always, I'm biased. I say shooting guards have the easiest job in, in, in all of basketball, <laughs> the fact that they just they come off the screen and catch and shoot. But when you're a point, you have to worry about the offense. There's a dunk by Keith Clanton. You gotta worry about the offense. You gotta worry about the defense. You gotta be three passes ahead, three plays ahead. You gotta be the coach on the floor. You gotta guard the other point guard. It's it, it's not an easy task. UCF's lead is five. Fields the drive, the kick. Good day. Good dish. And one. Good dish. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that UAB is exploiting right now is that when, when they drive and kick, when UCF goes to recover, you watch UCF recover on the shooter, and they just, their, their, their bodies are straight up, straight down, their hands are high, and they're just flying at the shooter, and they're flying right by him. Instead of closing out low, using your stutter step as a way to slow yourself down and be in position to slide in case the, the offensive player decides to drive. And they're just flying by on the kickout right now. There's the air ball chance. Oku air balled a free throw earlier in tonight's contest. He's just a 58% free throw shooter. Oh, oh, boy, oh boy, he missed it entirely. Dexter Fields grabs him and tells him to shake it off. The Soku's from London. They call that a bloody air ball over there. Only you, Mike O'Donnell. I know. Now, Jordan 
Got his pocket pick. Moore overruns it, settles. And UAB resets. It's a three-point game, nice lead. It's a good time for UAB to run the clock down. Get something in the post. Offensive rebound, Quincy Taylor. All right, you can see Coach Davis is going to call a set out right now. They need something off a ball screen to drive and kick. That's what's been successful for them in the first half. Cross court pass to Taylor on the drive. Pretty good help defense so far for the Knights. Seven seconds left. Danger time. Strong take. What a follow by big time. Soku. That's big time. That's just wanting it more. Plays like that. Taylor Young passed on the three. Gainer's got it. Spin. Travel. Travel is the call. That's the danger with P.J. Gaynor a little bit. He's so active and he plays so hard. Now watch this. Catch one, two, three. I mean, Hito Turkoglu might get away from that, but not P.J. Gaynor in the college <laughs> game. But that's, you know, that's kind of the knock on P.J.'s game a little bit. Is if he gets a big-time dunk and he'll hit a three, he'll try to do something every play. And, you've got, and he's, everybody has to understand that I'm not knocking P.J. Gaynor. is that he has the ability to make plays like that, but he's not a 20-point-a-game scorer. And he doesn't need to look for a shot every time. In the zone right now for UCF. Good job of UAB getting to the middle of the zone. Another open look for Dexter Fields. He's got three threes in this game. That's how you beat the zone. You get it to that sweet spot right in the middle of the zone around the uh, free throw line and, and kick out. Clanton with the right hand on the drive. That was pretty. Travel. Travel is the call. Johnson trying to do a little too much. He's got nine assists tonight. And He's often spectacular, but it'll be UCF ball when we come back. It's a tie game. Fifty-one all. Eleven minutes and thirty-three seconds remaining. Another solid crowd on hand for a game inside the UCF arena. There's a look at Mike Jaskalski. Spent four seasons here at UCF as an associate head coach to Kirk Spearice. On the UAB bench for the first time, he is opposing. UCF. They call him Coach Jazz. Coach Jazz, yeah, he was, uh, I played for Coach Jazz when he was an assistant for UCF. By far the highest IQ on the defensive end as a coach I have ever played for. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Coach Davis is ecstatic to have him on his staff. Well, UCF can thank Coach Jazz Kalski for recruiting Marcus Jordan, 
Keith Glenn and A.J. Robson. Well, they missed him. You know, you got to go inside of Tom. You got the he's got position. Have to figure out a way to get him inside. Jordan driving left to kick out Gaynor from way beyond the three-point arc. Clanton, the fight to keep that alive, and the call will go against Soko. Nice job by Keith Clanton. Well, you know, he's sneaky quick. I mean, he really is, and I, I can promise you it doesn't look like it. But he just kind of finds a way to just get it done, and that's a pretty good call. Actually could have gone either way, maybe. <laughs> But we didn't get to see the other side of that. Clanton is so even keeled, too, Mike. You rarely get a, a rise out of him. Even on a spectacular play, he'll remain stoic. The left hand by Herzog. Silky smooth. The sweeping left hand. 14.7 rebounds for Herzog and a block shot, but he won't get credit for that. That will be a foul. And I'm not sure who the foul is on. They may be calling it on Keith. And check it, Mike. That's 16 points for Herzog tonight. I believe that is his career high. It is. Tom Herzog's career high, 16 points. Fields makes the front end. Now, Herzog is a special case. Four years at Michigan State under Larry Izzo, and he transferred to UCF because he completed his graduation, but Michigan State didn't have the graduate degree program that he was looking for. And he registered a year at Michigan State. So he was at four years at Michigan State, graduated, and uh, the rule is you can play again if you can find a major or a, a graduate major that that school does not offer if you transfer. So Tom was able to find a, a graduate program that he was looking for that Michigan State did not have. Jordan with the right. Moore the rebound. Tie game, 53 apiece. With the points in the paint, UCF is dominating the glass. Got Aaron Johnson out of the ball game right now for UAB. Quick breather. He rarely sits. Well, he'll be back in in 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, the push in the back by Sykes. Soku was looking for, for the follow-up dunk. And he's been pretty active all game long. UCF is going to stop him. They need to find, try to find him when the shot goes up and box him out. But, but well done by Soku. I mean, he just he knows how to get to the rim and. There's not, a, there's not a direct science to that. I mean, it's just, you just want to get to the rim. That's how you do it. David Bauman, Mike O'Donnell here for UAB and UCF. Soko misses again from the free throw line. This crowd is really riding him. Soko now just two of seven from the charity strike. He He's airballed two free throws tonight. He needs to step up to the line with confidence. Say, said, I've done it a million times. And knock it in. There you go. Makes it. Sometimes it only takes one to get you going. Herzog will get a breather. P.J. Gaynor back in for the Knights. And here comes Johnson. Johnson averages 36 minutes a game. So does Cameron Moore. Jamar Sanders averages 35 minutes a game for UAB. Clanton. Timeout the call by Clanton. That's great defense. Wow. That is great defense by UAB. I mean, Keith Clanton had nowhere to go. Nine minutes, 48 seconds remaining. There's Mike Davis looking for his 100th win at UAB. 9.48 left. Both teams are kind of going back and forth. One point lead by UAB. It's going to come down to free throws and who takes care of the basketball because both teams are going to get shots. You know, UAB's knocking down outside shots, and the success for UCF offensively has been on the interior with Tom Herzog and Keith Clanton posting up. But so, really, you got to talk about 
free throws and not turning the ball over. You're not really going to see either team press for an extended period of time, but the fact that both teams are locking down in the half court, you got to be ready to not turn the ball over. It's better to take a bad shot than turn the ball over. Well, it's a block party for UCF this season. Keith Clanton climbing the charts. He's on pace to eventually be the school's all-time leader in block shots. P.J. Gaynor is going to get a couple of free throws. UCF trailing by one. And how about P.J.? It's a good slip by P.J. How about Gaynor getting the start tonight? Has played, has played minutes throughout the course of the year, but really this is his most extended minutes he's played all year long. And he averages only 13 a game. But he's taken, he's taken a few bad shots, but I think his positive output outweighs his negative output on the offensive end right now, just the fact that he's bringing energy to the team. And he's a good free throw shooter. 81% for the season makes the front end to tie it up. He's got a good shiner there on his eye. And a very physical player. The UCF leads by one thanks to the two free throws by P.J. Gaynor. Jamar Sanders. Sanders has been a little quiet here the last three or four minutes. Good deflection by Clanton. Back to Sanders. Defended by Gaynor. The drive. Blocked. Credit that to Keith Clanton. 7,431, again, above season average. Eighth largest crowd in UCF Arena history. So for the sixth time this season, UCF has recorded a top 10 largest crowd. Johnson for three. Back end. Oh, Gaynor had that poked away by Cameron Moore. Two hands. They teach it all the time. You have to come down with the ball with two hands. Under nine minutes to play. Taylor Young will check in at the next break. And you got to love what UAB does. They get an offensive rebound. They say, we're not going to rush a shot. We're going to run our offense. We're going to get a set and get a good bucket here. Johnson just running in circles. Defended by Gaynor now. Had that pick by Clanton. Almost got away with a carry there. Jordan drives right. That's what he likes to do. Block is the call. And Marcus Jordan, while he wants free throws, will he get him? They're going underneath, taking the ball out. He said it was on the floor. But you could tell he was not. That was far enough away to where it was a mix between in between the jump shot and his right-handed floater that he, that he likes to shoot. He was not comfortable taking that shot. For UCF, it's Young, Gaynor, Herzog, Sykes, and Sosa. Jordan Clanton will get a breather. Sosa, good luck. Switch. One, two, rip it and fire for Isaac Sosa. He's so good at squaring his shoulders and knocking shots down off of stagger screens. If you're UAB, you can't go underneath the screen. You have to chase the screen every time. Dexter Fields wants number four and gets it. Boy, oh boy, he comes back to his hometown and does some damage. Sykes! How about UAB the first time all game long that they have not gotten back a transition? UCF took advantage of it. Good pass ahead by Taylor Young. Young defending the dangerous Johnson. Mike Taylor Young, is he a case of hard work pays off? You no, know, there, there, there's the definition of, and, and everybody has to understand that he's a walk on playing significant minutes. And for all you young basketball players out there, all it takes is hard work and not turn the ball over, and you're going to find a place. But oh my gosh, that's a dagger. That's a tough shot. He's not going to shoot that very much. That was late in the shot clock, but had, uh, had Taylor Young backpedaling a little bit. And Young still got a hand in his face. Johnson still made that shot. 59 all. Sosa for three. Oh, boy. Rip it and rip it 
from Isaac Sosa along the baseline there. He's just so good from that deep corner. The, and, and if you're UAB, you have to know if, if Isaac Sosa's run the baseline, he's coming off two screens in the corner. Under six minutes and 30 seconds. Knights lead by three. You can see Taylor in the game. Dexter Fields misses. Now, and that, that is a good decision by Taylor Young because maybe in the first half you throw that pass, but not in the second half. Ooh, Johnson got beat right there. Taylor Young kicked it back. It's a good job of Taylor of probing. Sykes the drive, and he got that shot blocked by Cameron Moore. That's a big-time block by Moore. Uh, he's he's good. I really like Moore a lot. I think he's got a chance to be a – I mean, he's got one more year. He's a junior. He's got a chance to do something special this senior season. Not to say he's not having a good season right now, but get in the weight room. Like he's got a chance on. to be first-team Conference USA. Oh, absolutely. But I'm talking like he's got player of the year skills. I mean, that good. Draft pick skills. Oh, Gaynor good did no a good call. job by just staying back. He stood straight up, kept the hands up. Johnson tried to draw the foul, but the refs wouldn't bite. What a game. 62-59. The fans are into it. Sports Network is your home for high school sports. Now every Saturday night at 11, you can catch the latest game highlights, scores, features, and interviews right here on the new Toyota Sports Connection Prep Edition with host Tiffany Green and analysis from the Hall of Famer Bill Buckalter. See the future stars of tomorrow like Shane Larkin. New Toyota Sports Connection Prep Edition every Saturday night at 11 right here on VHSN. And if you haven't seen Shane Larkin play, go out and watch him play. He is the real deal. Or tune in to watch that game. The best change of pace point guard I've seen come out of high school in a long time. The son of former Major League Baseball star Barry Larkin. Marcus Jordan. Son of the NBA Hall of Famer Michael Jordan is running the point. Planting into Herzog, good position. Herzog doesn't finish, but he'll get some free throws. And that's the first time we've seen that high-low that we saw those first couple games of the season, and it was very successful for them. Herzog makes the front end of the two free throws. Free throws so important down the stretch here, 5.09 left. 
Herzog, just a 61% free throw shooter, makes them both. And in the game, he's a perfect six for six. It's a dangerous time for UAB. It's really important for them to get a bucket right now. They need a good half court set, double high ball screen. They call that a horn set. More drives right at Herzog. Moore keeps passing up on threes. He's a good three-point shooter. A reverse up and under by Johnson. It's a spectacular move. That's disgusting. I mean, it makes me sick that he has the capabilities to do something like that in a good way. That's incredible. Jordan passes on that. Gaynor. Short. Here comes Johnson. He's got a double-double. He looks up ahead. Kicks out for three. Sanders off the mark. And how quiet has Sanders been here? And bait pretty much in the last eight minutes of the second half. Sanders is 4 of 14 from the field. There's a look at Jeff Jordan, the Illinois transfer, Marcus Jordan's brother. He'll be eligible to play next season. Jordan will get a chance there, too, at that point guard spot. Uh, he'll play. He'll play because he, he's a very hard worker, and he's very good on the ball defender. So it's out to Clan. Crossover, a little high-low. Herzog picked up the dribble, tipped away. UAB ball, they trail by three. We're under four minutes to go. Sanders is having an off night. Johnson resets. Good decision, UAB resetting. They're going to go try and get Sanders involved here. Baseline runner, double stagger screen. Oh, Taylor threw it away. And Johnson said, shoot it, man. 64-61, UCF leads. This is a TV timeout. It's been a great game so far. 64-61, UCF leads UAB with three minutes and 34 seconds remaining. Here's a look at the new kids on the block. The 2011 commits, Michael Chandler, one of the top players in the nation. From Lawrence North in Indianapolis, Rod Days from Weston. Wayne Martin out of Jacksonville, Casey Wilson from Northport. That's the 2011 class. The newest commit to Sean Smith for 2012. He is Martin's teammate there at the Providence School in Jacksonville. Sean Smith is a real deal. I mean, he, uh, not to take anything away from the rest of the recruits because Michael Chandler is the fourth-ranked center in the country right now, but Sean Smith is the real deal. He's a program changer and, and at the point guard position, and he's a heck of a get by uh, Coach Jones and the rest of the UCF coaching staff. Donnie Jones knows how to recruit some outstanding players. Twelve of his former players have gone on to the NBA. Tom has to be careful that if UAB comes with a double. Oh, he lost that. 
Clanton back to Gaynor. What a hustle play that was. Shot clock does not reset, though, at 10 seconds. That Jordan takes notice of it. He's got Sosa. Does Sosa know? In the paint. Now, lost it. It'll be UCF ball with one second remaining on the shot clock. Well, one second left. You got to go with some type of lob play. So if I'm UAB, I'm crowding that lane. Shot blocked. Nice job by Cameron Moore. Well, it's a career night offensively for Herzog. 18 points. Up ahead is Sanders. The spin. And how he, how he put that in the hoop, I have no idea. That's in big traffic. time. That's big time. And he's been really, really quiet here. Let's see if he can't get going the last 240 left. It's now a one-point game. Sanders now with 11 points. Clanton thought about the three. The spin out to Sosa. UCF no has three players on the floor who shoot 40% or better from deep. Clanton, the best three-point shooter on the team. The tip ends up in the hands of Sanders. It's a one-point game. Timeout the call. Mike Davis with three timeouts left. UCF has three timeouts remaining as well. Well, it's my favorite night of the week, Sunday Night Fish Fry. BHSN is cooking up a full night of your favorite fishing shows with the Sunday Night Fish Fry. Join us Sunday nights beginning at 7 p.m. with the Average Angler Adventures. And it's a full hour of hooked on fishing at 7.30, Average Angler Classics at 8.30, Fishing the Flats at 9.30, and the new Extreme Fishing Adventures at 10 p.m. The Sunday Night Fish Fry right here on BHSN. It's making me hungry. I'm starving. I could go for a little mahi-mahi right now. I actually ate some sardines today. That's did, no lie. Did you really? I, I I can't get in the sardine game, to be <laughs> honest with you. It's a smell, you know, that just look like they're, they're staring right at you. <laughs> I feel bad. They were in the Louisiana hot sauce. Mm, Boom. Delicious. Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> what a game. 64-63 UCF leads, and the Knights are playing defense against the Blazers. Tough to stop this guy. Johnson's got 10 points, 10 assists. I think we're in for a pretty exciting two minutes left here. Herzog, one of the best defenders in college basketball, and Soko will get some shots. Herzog poked that ball away from Moore. Soko has been Johnny on the spot all night long. Moore might have got a lot away with a little hook there, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, Soko just always around the ball. He's just kind of like Isaiah Sykes for UCF, but he's so active, you know, getting to the rim. And you watch him. Watch him off the ball. He's always moving. He's always following the shot. It doesn't take a lot of X's and O's to figure out how Soko's getting his points. He's just outworking everybody. He's four of nine from the free throw line. The crowd has been chanting air ball all game long. He has air balled two free throws tonight. Two minutes, three seconds remaining, and now it's a tie game. Makes them both crucial Calmly. free throws. Calmly knocks him down. UCF now trailing by one. UCF for the game shooting 51% from the field. UCF is a perfect 7-0 this season. When shooting 50% or better for the game. Jordan uses the pick, and he will draw the foul. That's going against Soko. That's a good job of splitting the screen. I, you know, I think that if he wouldn't have gotten tripped up here, you watch Marcus split that double team. Had a pretty good path to the basket there. Check that. The foul went against Moore. Nope. They changed it up again. Soku, it is his fourth foul. Jordan, an 80% free throw shooter. Ties it up. That's his first free throw tonight. It takes a lot of poise, a lot of confidence to step up with a minute 53 left. Knock down two free throws. Spoke too soon. Jordan gets his own rebound, draws the foul. 
That is team foul number eight on UAB. He's staying right there at the free throw line. That's the cardinal sin. You got to box out the free throw shooter. Nobody touches Marcus Jordan. That's, that doesn't count as a box out with Sanders did. UCF takes the lead. 17 lead changes tonight. You must box out. Minute 50 left. Little things win basketball games. It's not always knocking down shots. It's not always coming up with a big steal. It's the little things like boxing on the free throw line that make all the difference. UAB UCF here at the UCF Arena, a crowd of 7,500. I'm David Dahman. Our color analyst is Mike O'Donnell, former Knights point guard. Scott Angles, our producer. Kendall Tierney, our director. Good Dexter kick. Fields, that's oh. his fifth three-pointer. Ice water running through Fields' veins right now. That's a kick, too, by Sanders. He came off the flare screen, drove the, the baseline. That is a kick. It is a homecoming to remember for Dexter Fields. Taylor Young, for three, may have gotten away with a little extra step, but he missed it. He hesitated. There was no way he was knocking that shot down. He thought about it way too much. Just got to be a basketball player and knock it down. One point lead for UAB. This crowd is loud. They're going to take it down to about 10 seconds. I think Coach Davis is going to get a timeout here with about 10. Yeah, he's going to get a timeout right now. 14 seconds remaining on the play clock, under 50 seconds in the game. Now, what's been successful for UAB in the first half and second half is, is that when they're coming off a ball screen or they're coming off a flare screen, if they don't have the three, they do a great job of attacking the basket to make a play, not necessarily attack the score. They're so good at driving and kicking opposite. That's, that's such a hard thing to teach because when you drive along the baseline, let's say if you're driving from the right side, if you're any kind of defense, you shift towards the ball. You're supposed to guard the ball. So if you can bring one or two defenders with you, what's always open? The deep pass, that long skip is that if you can get to the rim and you can skip it along the baseline there, which is exactly what happened on that last play with Dexter Fields. So we're taking a look at the highlights with Dexter Fields. He has been big time from the three-point line here in the first half and second half. Very poised. Nothing fancy, nothing flashy, just stepping up and knocking down shots. And that's what he did in high school. That's what he's doing for UAB right now. And there's the kick I was talking about right there. It's a career high, 19 points for Dexter Fields, 5 of 7 from deep, 6 of 8 from the field, and perfect 2 of 2 at the free throw line. Another thing that makes Fields good is he doesn't just stay in one spot to shoot the three. He will move without the basketball to find the open spot to knock it down. What will UAB do right here? Well, I think they're, I, I think they're going to go to Sanders, to be honest with you. You're going to see maybe that ball screen with Aaron Johnson and to try and get Sanders in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Right, right to Sanders on the wing. Clock. Sanders Ice water. It. Ice water. It's Great a four-point game. Timeout, Donnie Jones. That is a big time shot by Sanders. You can't get any more clutch than that. It's a good offensive set by UAB. Good play diagrammed up by Mike Davis. He was due. With a hand in his face too. I mean, that wasn't just a wide open three. Watch this. You see, that drive by Aaron Johnson is designed for him to drive right there. It's, it's not designed. He had no he, he had no idea that he was supposed to take it to the rim on that. Excuse me. He had an idea he was supposed to take it to the rim, but that was designed for him to drive. It was kind of like a pseudo drive, so have you, to allow Sanders to come around that top of the key. A Central Florida limited tickets remain for the much-anticipated basketball game between your UCF Knights and the Memphis Tigers Wednesday, February 9th at 7 p.m. at the UCF Arena. Don't wait any longer. This game will be sold out. Purchase your tickets today by calling the UCF ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com. 
the other day. It was announced that only 1,000 tickets remain for that game. Herzog in the paint misses it. Gets his own rebound and gets stripped. Herzog, the dunk and one! Whoa! Shake weight, Mr. Bauman. That's a powerful play. Herzog's got 20, a career high. Changes a two-possession game into a one-possession game right now with 24 seconds on the clock. You have an opportunity to catch it, catch it to, uh, to one point. If Tom makes this, you know UCF's going to come with a press, or if you UAB, you've got to have your press break ready. Probably go with 24 seconds left. You try and go for one steal and then a foul. This is, exciting. This, this is why, are you kidding me? We get to sit here and have access to call in this game? We get paid for this? An incredible game. Give me a break. I love it. Herzog misses the free throw, and UCF quickly fouls. Sanders will go to the line. UCF trails by two. Prior to that free throw, Herzog was a perfect six of six. He's got 20 points, eight rebounds. Mike Davis looking for his 100th win as the UAB head coach. 21.2 ticks left on the game. David Bauman alongside Mike O'Donnell here at the UCF Arena. Big crowd, 7,500, eighth largest crowd in UCF history. UAB has won three of their last four games. UCF has lost five straight. Sanders calmly knocks that down. He was so quiet there for about 12 to 14 minutes in the second half, and then big time players step up in big time games, and he's doing just that. He'll reach his season average in points if he makes this. Makes them both. Back to a four point game. Two possession game. You got to push it up in a hurry. And the press is on. Jordan. Into Herzog, out to Gaynor. Good kick. Jordan for three. Misses. Fields has the rebound. And in fitting fashion, Dexter Fields in his hometown of Orlando will get a chance to extend his career high in points. He already has 19, a sophomore from Olympia High School. That was, now, the not, the shot, now. That was not the shot that UCF wanted to get. You, know, you, you can't shoot a fadeaway three. I, I really thought Marcus Jordan was going to kind of turn the, the boosters on a little bit and try and get something at the rim. Rebound Clanton. Here comes Jordan. Sosa, 4-3, a leaner way short. He didn't need to do that. He didn't need to do that. Just catch and shoot. In that situation, you got two timeouts. Just catch and shoot a three like you know how to do. You call a timeout, you set up your press, you hope to get a steal. That's what should have happened. But uh, Isaac Sosa, you know, he's just trying to get an and one. Blazers, a second-half team, have outscored opponents this season by a total of 134 points and counting now with Johnson at the free throw line. And the crowd files out sensing this one is over. Johnson has definitely been the you know we talk about him a lot throughout the broadcast but it's almost like you can't talk about him enough because he does so many things well as a leader that don't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. And uh, Mike Davis said, he told me before the game, he's like, I think I'm going to cry when Aaron Johnson graduates. 74-69, the final score. UAB remains perfect in the all-time series against UCF. UAB now 6-0 against UCF. And the Knights have lost six straight games after starting the season a perfect 14-0, ranked as high as number 18 in the nation. Mike Davis with his 100th career win at UAB. UCF solid offensively, but not enough against the potent Blazers. We'll break down this game when we come back on Bright House Sports Network.
A sixth straight loss on the season for the UCF Knights. The UAB Blazers come to Orlando and pull out a 74-69 victory here in Conference USA play. Blazers now five and two in conference. Knights just one and six. David Bowen alongside Mike O'Donnell. It was a terrific game all the way down to the wire. Uh, 19 lead changes, 10 ties, and at the end, uh, Jamar Sanders came up with some big buckets. He was ice cold for the middle stretch of this game and then wound out with 18 points a season average. Well, he started off really hot in the first half, coming off down screens and dribble handoffs, knocking out some big time jumpers, getting to the rim as well. But in the second half went a little cold, but man, that last three at the end there, that was big time. I mean, that, hey, you talk about big time players stepping up in big time moments and big time games. That was nicely done by Sanders. Three pointers for UAB, 10 of 20 almost unconscious 50 percent from the three-point line the Orlando kid it was Dexter Fields coming to his hometown and just draining threes along with Sanders yeah he had a couple in the first half hit a couple in the second half moved so well without the basketball UCF really couldn't find him especially in semi transition but when you run sets for Fields and he gets his feet set forget about it that's automatic that's going in the hoop a career high 19 points for the former Olympia Titan star Dexter Fields. For UCF, it was Tom Herzog, the seven-footer in the middle with a career day. 20 points, his career high, and eight rebounds. He had some big blocks in this one as well. I thought Tom played very well. I thought he played very well and under control. He didn't really force anything. He had one bad shot, I think, in the first half. But for the most part, he played angles very well in the post. Was always his typical defensive presence was always there. But when he was able to get one-on-one -on -one situations in the post, it was automatic. It was those baby hooks over the left shoulder that were pretty much just couldn't stop. UAB couldn't stop that baby hook, and that spin move right there shows just some big-time basketball by Tom Herzog. And UCF had been desperately searching for a third option besides Clanton and Jordan on the offensive end, and they had Herzog to turn to. Here's a look at the final stats. Both teams shooting percentages way up there, 49 to 48, the free throws. UAB struggled from the free throw line. UCF did a nice job at 12 of 13. Three-point makes, 10 of 25 of 17 for UCF. UCF out rebounds UAB by one. They assist, thanks in large part to Johnson's 11, 19 to 12 in favor of UAB and the turnovers, 10 to 13, right about their season averages. Yeah, but the but the 19 to 10 assist to turnover ratio is I think what won the ball game for UAB yeah. is that on the offensive end they're so unselfish, and not only are they are unselfish, but when they they take good shots too. It's one thing to be unselfish, and you could be almost too unselfish where you're passing up good shots, but they have such confidence in each other. And and they're such good shooters that when they're driving, they're making the defense collapse. Collapse. They do a great job of kicking the ball out to the wing, knocking shots down. Tom Herzog had four block shots for UCF, and well, open up the record books because it's a banner year for this team in the paint, just blocking shot. Uh, Herzog leads Conference USA in that category. Clanton right behind him, second place, 144 on the season. There's still a long season left to be played here. Yeah, I think they're gonna. You're gonna see that number grow and grow as long as you bring energy and effort. Those blocks will keep adding up in the stat sheet. And and, and Tom Herzog and Keith Klan have done an outstanding job all year, uh, timing up those blocks and has done a really good job uh, stopping other teams' post players from having successful games. Mike, we don't have much time left, but what does UCF need to do to turn this thing around? Well, to be honest with you, you got to take into account that UAB is a really good basketball team, and I thought this was their best effort in the last six games of the season. They had a great effort against Marshall, but tonight you saw on the defensive end, you and I both looked at each other at the first break, and we said, wow, this is a total difference in the type of effort and speed and intensity that they brought in the first half and second half that they didn't have in the last five or six games of the season. So when once they fix that from the defensive end, which I think they did, knock a few shots down, they're going to be okay. For Mike O'Donnell and our terrific Bright House Sports Network crew, I'm David Bauman saying so long from the city beautiful UAB. A winner in this one, 74-69, the final score.